What's up guys, Coding Theorist here, back with another exciting Coding Theory video. But first, let's thank today's sponsor, Atri's T-Shirts. We'll be explaining compact discs and their encoding techniques, and what happens when a disc gets scratched. For this, we must first cover codes and what coding theory is in general. The goal of codes is to efficiently add redundancy to information so that when you transmit the data, if some parts get corrupted or erased, the original data can be decoded accurately. We will apply this to compact disks, which can easily get scratched or damaged. There should be a way to be able to recover parts or the entirety of the data, even if the disk's physical surface isn't perfect. It's pretty clear why this is important CDs are still a massively used medium, even today. By 2007, over 200 billion CDs have been bought and sold around the world. Its huge rise in popularity stemmed from being the most efficient way to store things like music, movies, and other forms of entertainment from the late 80s to 2000s at the time. Being able to store much more data in a physically smaller format than cassettes or tapes. In coding theory, original data to be transmitted is typically referred to as the message. From here, redundant bits are added to the message to form a code word. In other words, a code word is a message plus its redundant bits. These bits can be determined in a number of different methods. Let's see a trivial example. Let's look at a three repetition code over a language of size two, which means that each character is a binary zero or one. This is a very common assumption in today's digital world. This code can correct at most one error. Why? Let's just think about it. If there are no errors, we can easily map the code word back to the message that it was created from. If there is one error, we know that two of the three bits in the code word that were repeated for a single bit in the message will be unaffected. From here, we can just take the majority for each bit triplet. For example, if there are two zeros and one one, we will take the zeros as they are the majority. It's important to note that this cannot correct two errors as if two bits in the same triplet were affected, taking the majority would give us the wrong answer. But if we repeated the bits five times instead of three times, you could see through similar logic that we can correct up to two errors. Looking at the downside though, this would require four bits of redundancy for every bit of actual message. Coding theory is the balance of redundancy and error correcting capability through more sophisticated codes. Let's take a look at a more complicated example. Hamming codes. Hamming codes are what are known as linear codes meaning that a message can be encoded by representing the message to be sent as a vector and then multiplying that by a generator matrix. Let's take a look at a 7-4 Hamming code. This means that there are four bits in a message and seven bits in a code word. Here, we want to encode our message 1001. We multiply this as a row vector by the generator matrix G, resulting in our code word of one zero zero one 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 zero. The major constraint for a Reed Solomon code is the need for the alphabet size to be at least the size of the code word. Thus, when we create a Reed Solomon code with a block size of 255, we need the alphabet size to be at least that. Conveniently, a byte made up of 8 bits has 256 possibilities, satisfying this requirement. While the generator matrix for a Hamming code relied on parity, the generator matrix of a Reed-Solomon code is a Vandermann matrix. A Vandermann matrix is just a matrix in which the entry in the ith row and the jth column is the ith element in a finite field raised to the jth power. Compact disks use specifically cross-interleaved Reed-Solomon codes. What this means is that the data on a disk is not sequentially saved in lines, but rather such that redundant bits are not adjacent to each other. As CDs are most likely damaged by scratches, which can be said to be sequential lines, scratches affect a sequential part of a disk in a specific sector. Thanks to the cross-interleaving, staggering adjacent data bits, a scratch would not entirely corrupt a portion of data like it would if we were to just parity the data adjacent to itself. 
Just like our previous examples, the Reed Solomon code is focused on an alphabet size of 2, since we're dealing with binary information. Here, k is representative of the number of message bytes instead of bits as before. n is the code word length, meaning that for any string of k bytes, the Reed Solomon code adds a total of n minus k redundancy bytes. With this established, we will prove that the Reed Solomon code can correct up to a number t of errors. In other words, it is t error correcting. Here, 2 times t is equal to n minus k, the number of redundancy bytes, which means that the Reed Solomon code can correct up to n minus k divided by 2 errors in any message. Since we're transmitting data, we can have symbols of a given size in bits, where the length of a codeword block of n bytes is n equals 2 raised to the s minus 1. A common Reed Solomon code has 255 bytes in a codeword for a message of 223 bytes. Therefore, this code has a symbol size of 8 bits, since 255 equals 2 raised to the 8 minus 1. There are 32 redundancy bytes added to the message, since 255 minus 223 is 32, meaning that the Reed Solomon code in this instance can correct up to 16 bytes of random corruptions anywhere in the message. So, for any message encoded by Reed Solomon, there are n minus k bytes added to the message. It follows that the minimum Hamming distance between any two code words is n minus k plus 1. For a code to be t error correcting, we know it must have a minimum distance of 2 times t plus 1. When we apply this to the Reed Solomon code, since we already know it is n minus k over 2 error correcting, and t is equal to n minus k over 2, we can then put this t into the minimum distance formula we saw earlier. This then becomes 2 times n minus k over 2 plus 1, which, after canceling out the multiple i and divide by 2, it reduces to n minus k plus 1, which is what we already saw that the Reed Solomon code has for minimum distance. This then proves that it is n minus k over 2 error correcting, since we divide the minimum distance by 2 and then take its floor. In this demo, we will show Reed Solomon codes in action. First, we will see the normal disc play to get a baseline of the song. This is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in Spanish, as Jackie Velasquez is my favorite artist. In other words, it was the only disc I could get my hands on. Here you can see me scratching the disc with thin lines perpendicular to the tracks of the disc. Remember that the information on the disc is encoded in rings. Starting from the inside of the disc, reading the disc would take this path. This is what the scratches look like. Here I scratch along the tracks of the disc. While the disc has the same amount of scratching overall, it is all concentrated in one area. Here you can see when we try to play the disc, it reads for a while and eventually says that it gives up and has no information. Too many of the bits have been affected and the recovery code can no longer map the code word to the original message.